Hello everyone, welcome to the session. Uh, sorry for the delay that happened, you know, uh, earlier. There was some problem with the YouTube. You know, there is some issue with the live streaming, and I also thought it would be better if I can record a video and share it with you. Also, you can just watch it whenever you are free, and we can plan a kind of a session somewhere in uh, between seven to eight p.m. Uh, probably or Cisco WebEx or uh, probably on the YouTube where we can discuss more on the doubts that you know you have got over you know listening to this video so that's why I want to go with the recorded sessions as well uh, that's the primary reason because I it is very hard for me to even you know solve the doubts and also do this simultaneously and also there is something issue with the YouTube so let's get started like this yeah uh, so anyway welcome to the class so it's basically uh, a simple introduction to machine learning it's like a five week five sorry five day course uh, it's like a one week and we'll probably discuss on very very basics of uh, machine learning algorithms and where they are implemented uh, why they are implemented and what are different basic types of the machine learning algorithms and that's how we deal this yeah so we'll go through what is machine learning of course which is very much basic and later on we'll discuss about some of the types that we have in machine learning and later we'll talk about some of the popular algorithms you know we have uh, that are being widely used across you know several domains we'll look into that as well and probably i uh, like to discuss linear regression as part of this today's you know majorly we will cover the linear regression part and uh, tomorrow we will cover uh, how do we implement linear regression with respect to the Python. Yeah, so to start with, oh, what is machine learning? Uh, yeah, so as uh, one line of definition, so you are just creating an ability for the machine to learn, to perform certain tasks which are being manually done over a period of time. So we have some tasks uh, it, it, each and every industry that have been, you know, by which will be done by a person, you know, repeatedly. So there are some repeated tasks that are done. So if you have a machine doing all this process, you know, the, everything gets, you know, complete, completely faster, and the things would be, you know, uh, uh, on the right, on the road. So that's why it is, you know, uh, machine learning is so famous because. It, it is doing the things which man cannot do. For example, there is facial recognition systems which are in the mobiles which are being acting as one of the base security measures. And you have fingerprint scanners and you have uh, some of the prediction algorithms. And uh, so there are a lot of applications across several industries that talks about the importance of the machine learning in each and every area. So now we have almost every field which is talking about the importance of the machine learning and which is implementing machine learning algorithms and that's the main reason we have so many jobs across several industries so yeah these are, for naming these are some of the applications we have here so there is uh, image and speech recognition there is uh, medical diagnosis where we use uh, MRI scans you know especially in order to monitor some of the x-rays and you know to do some of the medical imaging we purely use some machine learning algorithms there are classification techniques which are being widely used there are some regression techniques there are some statistical methods and so i mean so machine learning is into everything and just to name a few you know we have just shown it here and what are some of the popular machine learning types that we have uh, so to start with, we have supervised, unsupervised, semi-supervised, and reinforcement. So these are the names that you usually hear if you are in an interview. So people would ask, like, what is the difference between supervised and unsupervised? Like, uh, what do you, what are different machine learning types that you are aware of? So these are the questions that usually come if you are like, you know, like a fresher and you are just entering a field with a you know entry job, entry level job. Then probably you would get you know something like this kind of question. So it would be. It is very much important for us to understand what does exactly each of these, you know, where does exactly each of these algorithms being used and what does each of them, you know, actually mean. So uh, let's start from, you know, supervised. So it's pretty much straightforward. Almost all algorithms that you see in real world applications are basically supervised. So for example, uh, let's take uh, image recognition as such so or uh, simply there is there are some cat images there are some dog images that are available 
and you got to figure out when a new image comes you got to figure out whether it is cat or dog so pretty much simple so there is image one you name it cat image two you name it dog image three you name it cat so you have some training data that is available you train the machine saying that if these are the features you call it cat these are the features you call it dog so like that you train the machine and when a new kind of image comes it kind of process the features it compares and says okay these features are close to cat so i'll say it's cat so something like that so i mean that's what supervised is so you have some data you have some supervision on top of it and that's how supervision supervised works when it comes to unsupervised uh, so as the name itself says there is no data that is available that says this particular image is cat or this particular image is dog or this particular information is this so you don't have the training data called y variable or nothing but the output for the values and you got to still train the model how do you do it simple so you just have to cluster the things which are similar and you have to group them as one you don't have to name that group uh, suppose there are similar features of dog that are available you don't know that it is dog okay you know some animal but it is all these images are having similar features you just cluster them you put it somewhere you don't have to name them but you just call it cluster one and you have another set of features uh, probably is of some other animal you don't know the name of that animal you just have to cluster all of them and put it somewhere because similar animals uh, have similar features right so all the dogs would have similar features all the cats would have similar features so that's how you determine unsupervised you don't say that it is cat or dog but you group them and put it somewhere later on we'll decide okay this could be this and this could be this that's how we work on unsupervised techniques and semi-supervised is a blend so kind of sometimes in some of the applications we don't or we need not use lot of the data that's where the active learning part comes into the picture so the name itself says you don't uh, active learning so the name itself says which means that you have to do an active learning uh, which means that a transfer a blend of supervised and unsupervised so you have some data that is available uh, with the training i mean some says it's cat and some says it's so and some of the data that you have doesn't actually have any labels assigned to it so generally uh, we call these labels so cat one if you say uh, image one is cat then cat and dog these are called labels so in some of the data if you don't have labels uh, uh, and we some of the data we have labels we'll blend them and we'll produce a semi-supervised algorithm on top of it and there is reinforcement which is basically a game uh, related uh, kind of concepts so for example if you have to play chess uh, so what would be the next state of the game or what would be the next step of the game if the computer was able to determine that the step process or it was able to train it was able to play the games on its own then probably we are using a reinforcement and learning there which means that we are using a state space analysis where we are telling the next state is supposed to be this based on the current state so that's what our reinforcement learning probably talks about so in this particular uh, five day uh, course i would like to cover basically all supervised you know, all learning techniques all the other threes are like a bit advanced if we understand supervised very well then we can move on to the later parts so that's where i wanted to just first focus on supervised learning so let's go so in supervised learning also there are two classifications one we call it regression and other we call it classification so yeah in supervised learning we'll be given some data set and we know already what is the correct output we call them as labels and we have to figure out what is the relation between the given input and also the output so that's the kind of uh, framing we will be having when we talk about supervised learning uh, so there are two types of supervised learning probably one is uh, regression and the other is classification so if we talk about regression uh, what it does is so we are trying to predict the, predict the results which are uh, with a continuous output so what does that mean so for example uh, we have a, a temperature data that is available for the past 200 years for example so at 1990 uh, first past 200 in the sense for the 1800 so 1820 you have a temperature average temperature 
uh, at some place, let's take uh, Hyderabad, you know, to be somewhere around uh, 25 degrees centigrade. And in 1821, you have 28 degrees centigrade, and average, I mean, we talk about all India. So average temperature for 1821. So like that you have years from 1822 or 2020 probably, and you have all the average temperatures uh, for all the years. And you got to predict what would be the average temperature for the next year. So that's kind of uh, a continuous output. You have all the data that is available and you got to predict what is the next coming data or next data that is uh, that would be there. Or probably uh, even more simpler example if we talk about, let's take there is a class with 10 boys uh, and probably 10 students I must say. 10 students and let's say each student has got some marks uh, okay be, uh, and every student uh, has gone through this much hours of the study we can say these two are the time so for example there is a uh, uh, there will there be some boy called Karthik and uh, he studied for some probably so like eight hours a day and he got about like uh, 80 80 marks 80 percent marks and there will be some Satish and he kind of did uh, 10 hours of study and he scored somewhere around 90 marks and so, so something like that. So you have uh, you know, data for 10 different uh, you know, people that is available and you got to figure out uh, what is the probability or what is the value for the next guy that comes uh, who is not in this list for the 11th person and what is the, he has studied for like probably uh, maybe some uh, seven hours or eight hours you got to figure out what would be his marks so something similar to that so that kind of uh, approach is probably called as regression so here we are trying to predict the continuous output data that's the and next is classification a little different from regression in a uh, different way so classification as the name itself says we'll try to say whatever that comes into our mind should be one of the class so uh, pro probably you are given some images and you see the images and you say okay this is okay you say you when you were be given like uh, uh, maybe uh, images of different fruits you would say okay this is apple this is orange and this is uh, some banana so like you would be doing some classification saying that this fruit belongs to this so that's basically is a classification if a machine could do this then we, we probably say you know oh, it's a supervised learning Learner, learned machine or something like that. Yeah, so let's take more uh, detailed examples. So if we talk about the classification, uh, the simply the phones that we are using are, are doing some kind of facial recognition. So it's kind of doing their recognition of whether the face that uh, you know the phone, the camera that is seen is you or a different person. So if it is you only, then you can open the phone. So that's basically it is doing a classification there whether. Uh, the phone owner is uh, the one who is looking at the camera or a different guy so that's pretty pretty, pretty much straightforward uh, application of the classification yeah so and you have many other things uh, you have speech recognition so there would be Alexa uh, if you say something then it will recognize that and it will say okay this is what you said and that's it so these are all some very very extensive applications of the classification and, uh, like almost 90% or 80% of the uh, supervised algorithms are pretty much on uh, classification side and there is a lot of research going on the classification side and compared to the regression part yeah uh, let's take a more uh, statistical example suppose you have given the size of the houses uh, and you got to predict the uh, what is uh, the price of that house so for example a 1500 square feet house could be some 80 lakhs uh, a 1700 square feet house could be some 90 lakhs and in some of the very costly areas even 1400 square feet house could be one group so that's how you know the prices are distributed across a particular city so you were given some around like uh, probably 20 to 30 data samples and you are asked to predict what could be uh, uh, the price of a house with so and so square feet and you got to say what is the price so this is purely a regression technique uh, and you got to apply some regression algorithms on top of it because it's purely is continuous 
and when it comes to classification we'll tweak the problem a little bit so if you want to make this a classification problem so for example you have a, a set of houses you have its uh, you know the square feet data and some guy comes uh, and he says okay i have uh, a square feet of 1800 and the price that i'm saying is some um, one crore do you think it's a more or less when compared to the asking price so i mean there would be some ideal price he is just asking whether it is above that or below that so he is asking to put you know the result in one particular class so that's purely a classification problem so you are he is trying to tell whether the given price uh, that he is talking about for that 80 lakhs value is above the asking price or below the asking price so that is something purely a classification technique but not a regression so you are not predicting anything he is already telling that it is 80 lakhs but he is asking whether it is better uh, than the asking price or less than the asking price so that's purely a different kind of a classification technique yeah so uh, as we discussed so given image of uh, image of a pet uh, so we have to predict whether the image is dog or cat uh, how do we do it? so what what do we call it we call it a uh, you know regression or a classification so probably this is like uh, you know uh, this is probably classification yeah and given a picture of a person we have to predict the age on the basis of the given picture so you are not doing any kind of a classification or something you just have to predict you know what is the uh, age of that person based on the given picture so this is probably the regression yeah so that's how we do this uh, uh yeah so uh, let's get into the unsupervised learning part so so you have uh, the best example is the already talk about the uh, the concept bands and you have cross string of the sounds and you just have to pick which sound belongs to what that's purely an unsupervised learning technique so for example let's say uh, so you have uh, there is a huge concert is going on and you have several instruments being played there so you have violin you have guitar uh, you have some mouth organs you have tabla you have harmonium uh, you have like uh, like probably 10 different instruments that are playing and you have you know some vocal singers you know singing the song and uh, so now what you should do is your uh, uh, task is to actually cluster the sounds of each of these instruments what do you do you don't know how tabla sounds you don't know how uh, how violin sounds guitar sounds you know when you have like 10 different instruments what do you do here what do you do is uh, each of these instruments has their own fundamental frequency so violin has its own frequency and it has its own frequency so what we do here is uh, instead of targeting what is the uh, instrument that we have we will pick the frequencies so for example let's take uh, all the sound samples that are between 120 to 130 hertz frequency we will make it a cluster we don't name it but we'll just make it a cluster and we'll put it as a all the frequency samples that are between uh, 200 hertz to 300 hertz we'll pick them we'll put it on one more cluster so we'll make these different clusters first uh, of these sounds and then we'll we'll then confirm okay this could be you know violin this could be guitar so here we don't know uh, what is the frequency of the violin or what is the frequency of the guitar we don't know this information what we are doing here is we are just trying to figure out the similar frequencies and we are just clustering them so that's one good way to uh, identify the supervised learning techniques yeah yeah so let's move on to the more popular machine learning algorithms that are widely being used so there is uh, so this classification we have already seen so there is machine learning and uh, there is uh, supervised learning and there is unsupervised learning so in supervised learning there are two different trees there is classification and then there is regression so i just uh, you know highlighted some of the algorithms which are quite famous uh, in the machine learning world so probably i'll try to cover all these three algorithms in this uh, five weeks duration so let's first let's start with you know linear regression as such so later we'll move on to 
support with conversions and then to a neural network so uh, i'm not covering any of the uh, unsupervised learning techniques here uh, a bit of you know like those techniques are um, a bit advanced and not much being used in industries so but supervised learning techniques are like quite uh, useful and if you want to get into a jobs like predictive analytics supply chain analytics or if you want to uh, get into that part of the areas then you know linear regression plays a huge role because regression techniques are quite well being used in those areas and of course all the classification techniques are widely being used across all the industries so if you are if you take a uh, natural language processing industry where you have to figure out uh, you know you have to classify the text so there there is a lot of you know applications that are available out there and there are a lot of jobs available out there uh, if you consider neural networks you see neural networks in all the three uh, spaces so you just have to uh, modify tweak a little bit of the uh, architecture to apply regressions to apply for classification to apply for the cluster so that's how uh, basically the neural networks work they are very powerful it's very hard to cover neural networks in a week so mm, try to do it some basic out of it but uh, we'll give a touch on like what's neural networks and how it goes in for that classes but uh, we'll start with linear regression first i mean that's the starting point for any of the machine learning algorithms uh, that's purely because you have you know uh, you have an equation which is simply linear and so it's where all all the things start so let's let's go ahead and start with linear regression yeah so this is how the algorithm is you have some training set and you have some learning algorithm and you got to predict uh, the y so that are the things that we are talking about earlier as well so for example uh, you have some uh, data that talks about um, uh, living area of the house so for example there is a living area that is drawn on the x-axis okay you have all the values of the living area probably 1200 square feet 1300 square feet 1400 so it goes on like this and there are uh, house values also that are available like uh, 80 lakhs and 90 lakhs uh, 1 crore 1.2 uh, 1.5 and this two, yeah. I know which you say uh, just drawing it. So, for example, let's take in some areas 1200 square feet house. Uh, let's take a uh, let's draw more here 70 lakh. So, 1200 square feet area a house would be somewhere around 70 lakh. And you have predicted values uh, which are y cap. So, the values that so I would uh, redraw the graph here would be better. So, when you just take the same graph, so this would be x axis this would be y-axis and if you got to figure it out some value here uh, yeah so if you got to figure out some value of this entire data set this one this would be your y cap and the function to find this entire process is probably a j, j function and we'll deal about that yeah so if we get more into the details so you have uh, linear regression uh, i was just talking about in a more pictorial way so you have 1500 area of the house and you have a price to be 80 lakhs and you just plot it here on this graph and you got to figure out uh, how do we build a linear regression model on top of it so um, what do we do so if we have to find out some value somewhere in here we probably will take a line so you have the predicted line that feeds into two values we call this linear regression because the equation that we are seeing is purely of the form like y equal to mx plus c so if we recollect our mathematics basics, so this is what we have. So if we take the slope and the intercept value, we get this line. So if we take a different M and a different C, the line would be somewhere like this. If we change the M and C again, the line might be like this. The line might be like this. So the idea is 
what would be the best values of MNC in order to predict the Y. So that is the key. So the MNC that we are talking about here are nothing but the weights. So W0 and W2. How do we figure out these values? How do we know the best W0 and W1 values so that the line that we are drawing across these points would be having zero error? So for example, why do we why do we say this line is perfect? Because if we consider this, this particular value 1400, the point here is so close to this line. So it is trying to connect all the points and if some, so for example, if the line is something like this, then for, for 1200, you have somewhere around 20 lines, which is like unlikely. So the line that we are drawing here is so erroneous. So how do we find that how, how that happens? How can we, how can that make sure that, you know, this would happen? So that's purely, we call it as mean squared error. So you have Y cap, which means that. So, so this Y cap would be here and the Y would be here. We are trying to find out what is the difference, which means that we are trying to find out the square of form of the error, uh, like between these points and also the true, true values or the original values. So this difference is what that we find it out. So for example, let's take we have line something like this. Let's take. I have a line so I tried to fit it with some W0 and W1 values and I got a line something like this now if we try to calculate Y cap minus Y across this point this is our Y cap and this is our Y this Y cap minus Y would be somewhere around so let's take here it is somewhere around 17,000 and here it is somewhere around so 17,000 minus 7,000 is like you have almost 10,000. So this is the difference between the values of the line that was fitting here. But if you fit a line, something like this. Okay. Then the difference between this value and this value is 7,000 minus 5,000, which would be like which is the least this is the least what is this this is called error the error should always be least that's why we call it as a loss function or this error whatever we are saying this this total this should always be minimum whenever this particular value is minimum we get ideal values or the most uh, correctly predicted values for this set of data points. So that we generally call it as linear regression. Simply we are trying to fit a linear equation to the given set of points. The goal, the goal is to minimize this function. So if we have to minimize any function f of x, what we generally do is we find its derivative and when we find its derivative we will try to figure out where the derivative is minimum so that is a very basic way to calculate a minimum for any given f of x so the f of x that we have here is j of w and if we have to find out the derivative of j of w we call it uh, d of j of w by dw so that is the derivative function that we are talking about or the, the gradient function that we are talking about and in order to find the minimum of this we call with the term gradient descent what do you mean by gradient descent gradient descent means that we have some derivative and this derivative would eventually reach a minimum a global minimum how would we reach a global minimum so we have function j uh, which is like the cost function of the or we call it as a mean squared error function or a loss function and we have to minimize this particular function 
So how do we minimize f of x function uh, in a general calculus terms? So in order to minimize a particular function or where the minimum occurs for any kind of f of x, what we do is we kind of we kind of find the derivative or the first derivative of the given function. That's what we are doing here. So the derivative is popularly called as the gradient. And since we are trying to make sure that gradient should go to minimum, we'll call it as a gradient descent. Okay, so the only thing we are trying to do is we are trying to find a minima for the given equation. So in order to find the minimum, what we should do, we should find the derivative. Okay, so that's what we are doing here. So j of w is our f of x and we are trying to find out the dou j of w by dou w. So this is our equation that we have here. What are we doing here? We are just trying to find a new weights that we are getting. So initially we take some weight for so the w that we are talking here about holds w0 and w1 values so initially we'll take we'll choose some weight for w0 and w1 and we'll try to figure out the first w and then we'll see how that you know whether it is giving us a minima or not and then we'll increase with respect to some learning rate we'll change the value of the w and we'll again calculate and then we again update the values of the weights and we'll see it has gone a little bit more. We'll update again the weights and we'll see it has gone a little bit more. So eventually this particular it reaches this particular point. So that's where we have a local minimum. Okay. So why it is happening like this? Because the thing that we are talking about, the do j of w by do j is basically the slope at every given uh, dot w. That is this point. So when we eventually decrease the values of the learning rate, we find new initial weights. When we plug in those weights into J of W, we get a global minimum. So that's how the gradient descent you know, usually works. So you, every time you calculate one value, you got to predict the y, y cap of, out of that. You got to compare, you calculate the MSE. Again, you, you know, calculate the new weights. Again, you put them in the equation, you calculate uh, whatever the uh, values that you get from here you obtain the uh, messy and we see whether it is low or not again we imp uh, improve the values of the w again we calculate j of w again we put there so this is a repetitive process that continuously keeps going so the y cap that we are talking about is basically you know y cap is simply w0 plus w1 star x right so so whatever the value that we get from this equation or by changing the learning rate we put it in y w j plus w one star x. We calculate the y cap. We again put this y cap in this equation. We calculate j of w. We see whether it is going better when compared to the previous values. Again, we repeat this process till it reaches a particular minimum. So this is the usual way of learning the curve. So if when we do this initially, how it is happening is when we take the initial weights of w zero w one, the first line might be somewhere like this when we have all the data points. Uh, and we have all the data points that are available that first. So the first line might be like this you know uh, when we eventually change the values the line might be something like this and when we change something like this and eventually fits all the values something like this so that's how it happens when we actually change the weights here and that's how they get updated here so that's the process of linear regression yeah so what happens when you don't choose a perfect learning rate uh, this is a very very important uh, point to be discussed so, uh, so the point the learning rate or the l that we are choosing is has to be little too low like somewhere in 0.01 and even some of the cases we choose it to be like you know like uh, point not 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 one so very low that's because the the gradient descent that we are talking about has to go a bit too slowly but not too fast i mean it should take very very small steps but what is the disadvantage of this i mean it takes a lot of time i mean to reach from here to here it takes tons of iterations if the learning rate is too too low what if learning rate is too high so you start here and also probably you start here and probably the learning rate is very high like or two sometimes it's even sometimes people take even four if that is the case it will eventually shoot to the next side of the base so 
again it goes like this like this like this so learning rate doesn't actually follow a simple step because you are trying to find out the derivative here so the learning rate is probably called an hyperparameter and it plays a very important role for us in order to predict gradient descent so to make sure that gradient descent takes small small steps we have to choose a very low learning rate with the disadvantage of choosing a very low learning rate is you need to do a lot of iterations in order to reach the global minimum and what if we and also one more uh, issue we have here is if we choose a small learning rate so if you take some so probably in some of the uh, equations you might have a curve like this so uh, what what happens here what is the global minimum this is the global minimum but when we choose smaller learning rates the minimum eventually descends and it stops here it never comes here so this is also one of the biggest uh, cases where the learning rate plays a crucial role you got to figure out an optimal learning rate in our uh, in our process of solving a linear regression equation and if we choose a wrong learning rate it's always going to be a problem initialization so sometimes people initialize weights you know probably somewhere very wrong so if you have a curve like this let's take you have curve like this and if someone initializes weights here and something like this it is very hard for it to cross this minima and come here okay so initialization of the weights also should be very much important i mean people have some ways to actually do the initialization of the weights and i mean if we go through a little too deeper into the concept we will understand but at this point of time the very basic we should understand is choosing a large learning rate uh, learning rate versus choosing a very small learning rate plays a cru crucial role in you know the algorithm to get optimized or to converge yeah so uh, that's uh, with respect to linear regression uh, i hope you kind of understood like what's going on here and probably we'll see all these things through coding like why it is happening how it is happening and things like that in, uh, in tomorrow session see so there is there are two different uh, year values so there is x1 uh, that we have and which which talks about the square feet of each house and there are prices that are listed across each square feet what if you have more parameters so in some of the cases you need to put you know the area the name of the area so if it is far from the city the prices would get affected and if the area doesn't have water supply yes the house of the price would get affected so all these are different inputs that we are not considering in our uh, problem so if you were given like multiple inputs in order to solve the equation what would you do that is probably called as multiple linear regression so you get multiple inputs and you have to figure out an equation out of that that means you are trying to figure out uh, a polynomial uh, with respect to a case where you have multiple inputs so you don't deal it in a 2d space you in fact deal it in n dimensional space so that's the difference so instead of having a line you will have a plane if you consider three different uh, attributes so that is how you can extend this part you know of a linear regression into that so so the parabola that we are talking about and you can say when we are talking in two dimensions it would be like a bowl like this so if we get a uh, simple bowl so that's how the parabola looks in uh, a 2d dimension uh, thing so if you have multiple variables if you have then we call it multilinear regression the optimization function is generally would be kind of a bowl so that's how it gets extended in the multi dimension space so multiple linear regression is quite you know uh, very hard to depict or very hard to visualize but it's also being used across many industries for you know understanding the problem because it's just an extension of the linear regression which is holding all the properties which are similar and we'll just try to figure out you know, the in terms of the bound where the minima goes tomorrow we'll discuss about uh, the implementation of the regression on python and i will send you some of the important modules that are necessary so if, i mean when you install anaconda so you get all the necessary modules that are needed in order to implement you know python uh, but i'll still uh, if there is anything needed i would i would eventually share you know the code also in prayer so that you can understand and you can run the things on your own 
and also the data in case if it is needed and just uh, put it on github and you can just share the link or something like that i'll do that and i'll send them all these things over the email and that's it for today's class and tomorrow we'll probably discuss on the implementation of the regression and we'll see all these concepts so we'll see if we change the learning rate what happens and what if we increase the learning rate what if we decrease the learning rate and how the learning rate plays a crucial role uh, what are different accuracies that we get you know, how do we determine the accuracy how do we fit a line all these things we'll just visualize through the programming and we'll reiterate the theory that we talked today and if we have any questions if you want to discuss on the same we can uh, do it from uh, 7 to 8 pm i'll uh, share the link probably we can do it on the web or even we can do it on youtube also so you can just write the comment and i'll be you know just putting my camera close and we can discuss on this uh, so i'll probably share that link uh, for now uh, i know uh, that's it